What's going on guys? I'm Marco here with Dynasty Nerds and I am bringing you my week two starts and sits. Week one, we did pretty well. The deep sleepers were a little bit of a miss, mostly due to injuries. But of course, week two is finally here. It feels like it's been too long without football already. And I've got my wide receiver and running back start sits. Again, if you've got a quarterback or a tight end question, drop them below or hit me up on Twitter at Marco underscore 14P. My DMs are always open to answer any questions that you might have. At wide receiver, the first guy I want to talk about is Allen Robinson. A huge dud in week one. I understand the booze came in. I get it, I get it, I get it. But here's the reality. He was on the field regularly. Regularly, He was open regularly. This is just part of the growing pains of a new offense. This offense and Matthew Stafford has been used to relying on their one guy, Cooper Cup. That's just what it was. But Allen Robinson is on the field enough. He's getting open enough. He's not just some scrub who's covered all the time. I think this week he could be able to eat quite a bit in Atlanta. Of course, he might have A.J. Terrell on him, who's a very good corner, but still, Allen Robinson is going to get his sooner rather than later, and I think week two is where we see that emergence happen. All right, the next guy on my list is wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, Brandon Ayuk. So here's the reality. Elijah Mitchell, he's on IR, which means Debo Samuel is probably going to be used in the run game a little more. They're going to have a rotating carousel uh, of players that are going to be running the football. Brandon Ayuk might get involved, but this likely means that we are going to see what we saw from him from weeks 10 to 18 last year, where Debo's a lot more involved in the running game, and Brandon Ayuk leads this team in targets, even with Debo and Kittle healthy and on the field. I like Brandon Ayuk to lead the team in targets, not just for week two, but for the rest of the season. I was saying this in the offseason, but this just solidifies it. Brandon Ayuk is a guy who could skyrocket in value if he is leading this team in targets, and if Trey Lance is the real deal, I'm not taking much from week one from either side because it was just an absolute mess with that weather and the field conditions. All right, the next two guys for my starts at wide receiver, and I'm giving you a couple of them here because wide receiver is deep. Um, Curtis Samuel, he, he was hyper involved and used in a number of different ways for the Washington Commanders in week one. And this is one of those juice the orange kind of situations. We know that Curtis Samuel probably isn't going to be healthy all season. But when he is on the field, we have seen that he is a dynamic playmaker. This team wants to use him that way. In PPR leagues especially, he could be a legit flex option with wide receiver three, wide receiver two upside. That's the kind of impact that he's going to be making on this team when he's healthy. I like him against Detroit in week two. He's not going to see the top coverage, and he's probably going to be used as a safety blanket that people were expecting J.D. McKissick to be most of. Now that is Curtis Samuel for this team. All right, the last guy we got to talk about, Josh Palmer. He's a guy I've hyped in a lot of our off-season dynasty videos as a guy who was kind of like a premier wide receiver handcuff. That's kind of a thing these days. And if you were smart and listened to me in the off-season, you know that Josh Palmer is a guy who's already on your bench. He's already on your taxi squad, whatever it might be. And that is great. And in redraft leagues, Josh Palmer is a guy who you should have priority added if you haven't already. With Keenan Allen missing at least week two, we know that Josh Palmer is going to fit immediately into the Keenan Allen role. That's the kind of role he is built for. That's the role he is made for. And he could be peppered with targets in this one. But he is made for that slot wide receiver role. He's a solid route runner. He's got great hands. And he's going against a Chiefs team that is going to be putting up points all game long. Josh Palmer has wide receiver two upside and appeal in this week. And you do not want to miss out on the value here. All right, so let's jump over to the wide receivers I am sitting this week. I've only got three of them. I'm going to go through them a little quick. My first one is Devin DuVernay, and I'm going to say it really quick. Don't chase touchdowns. That's what you would be doing if you immediately put him into your lineup, especially if you're not in a deep league, you know, 10-team league, even 12-team league. He's like a flex two at best. Rashad Bateman is there. Mark Andrews is there. I'm not overly concerned about Devin DuVernay doing this again. This is probably the best game of his season. Sure, he might have some pop-off games here and there, but two touchdowns, that's just not likely for Devin DuVernay going forward. Don't or do not chase touchdowns. All right, the second guy is Devonta Smith. There's a million asterisks here, though. Obviously, this is Dynasty Nerd, so we were talking Dynasty. Devonta Smith is a guy I am so excited about for Dynasty. Season-long redraft leagues, though, you have to know that he's probably a wide receiver three at best. 
the week one situation where he only saw four targets, didn't catch any of them. That's not going to be every single week, but in redraft leagues, you have to be worried about just the overall volume that's available to him. I don't think this is, like I said, I don't think this is always going to be the case where he only gets four targets. In Dynasty, he is one of the wide receivers who's on my list of guys I'm buying. So don't panic in your Dynasty leagues. For this year, if you've got him, he's probably a flex player for you at best right now, but hold on to him. It will pay off, I promise. All right, the next guy is a guy I love, and he was actually a start for me last week, and it paid off. But Drake London is actually a sit for me this week. And I'll say this, if you need to put him in your flex or a really a flex two spot is where I'd be the most comfortable, I'm fine with that. But he shouldn't be a starting wide receiver for you in you know most leagues that are starting you know two to three wide receivers. I don't think he's really in that range. Like I said, flex, flex two at best, um, or sorry, flex two at worst. I think those are the those are the two areas where I'd be comfortable playing him, but I'm not excited about his matchup. He is going to be one of those guys who has some up and down weeks based on the competition. And it's not really because of Drake London. It's because of Marcus Mariota. It's because of the Falcons, you know, team and offense as a whole. So Drake London, Dynasty, love him. Week three, maybe I even like him. You know, week one, he was great. Week two, he's a guy who I'm fading just a little bit. Now that is my wide receivers. Let's jump into the running backs. Okay, so running backs, I've only got a few of them here. Obviously, running backs isn't as deep as uh, as wide receiver. You typically don't need to play as many. There's not as many to talk about, but the starts for week two, I have two guys who underperformed, or I should say one underperformed, one kind of was okay, uh, but Travis Etienne. Here's the reality. If you watch all of Travis Etienne's touches or opportunities in from week one, he looked good when he was on the field. Outside of that one bad drop, he looked good. He's probably going to be the biggest playmaker on this team. I think Christian Kirk has shown us that he's going to be hyper involved as well, but the Jags aren't likely to be able to run as well as they were uh, in week one against this Colts defense. And ETN has RB2 appeal with upside because of what he can do in the pass catching game. Um, And honestly, we'd be talking about this through a very different lens if he was able to uh, bring in that touchdown and then wasn't overthrown by Trevor Lawrence in the end zone for his second touchdown. So it's one of those things where just things didn't didn't work out for him. James Robinson is real. I was I was definitely wrong on <laughs> James Robinson. We'll see if it can last an entire season, but Travis Etienne is still a guy I am buying in dynasty leagues. And if you've already got him on your team, do not sell at, at a discount because week two, he could show people that he's able to get into the end zone and that he is one of the premier playmakers for this Jaguars team. All right. The second guy I want to talk about is Naheem Hines. Hines saw six targets in week one, and I think that number is safe as a safe floor for him heading into week two. He's going against Travis Etienne and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it's a defense that has some pieces, but it's mostly not very good. And so Naheem Hines is a flex level play with potential upside, but I think that flex level is perfect for him. He's going to probably see six to eight targets in this one. He'll get, you know, four to five carries as well, but he's right in that 12, max 15 touches range. But in PPR leagues, those receptions count and he is a very prolific pass catcher. He's a guy who could definitely hold over your team in week two if you're looking for a desperation or uh, a flex play that can just get you the points. You need the points to get across the threshold and Naheem Hines could be that guy for you. All right, so let's talk about my sits. Um, I'm going to preface similar to last week where I said an entire backfield, the San Francisco running backs. I don't want to touch them, not just for week two, season long. I am not interested in the San Francisco running backs. It's going to be a committee between Debo Samuel and every running back that they have or sign or will have. And that's going to be ugly. Jordan Mason, sure, he's fine. Uh, Tyrion David, or yeah, TDP, he's he's a okay player. I, I think he's worse than Trey Sermon, so uh, he's going to be okay. Just uh, Jeff Wilson is another guy who a lot of people are excited about, and we've we've played that game already. Ultimately, this is just going to be an absolute mess of a committee, and it's not like who's going to be the guy. It's there's going to be a lot of guys. Some people will leave this week, some people will leave that week. Just avoid this backfield. Don't. I hope you didn't spend fab on these guys. And uh, in Dy- in dynasty leagues, there's not anyone that you're really excited about. If you've got Elijah Mitchell, throw him on your IR. I'm hoping that he comes back next season and gets to be the guy because I think that's what he was going to be this year. But that's obviously not the case. And uh, there's no one for dynasty purposes, especially that I'm interested in, in week two or beyond uh, in, in this season for the San Francisco uh, running backs. All right. My second sit is Rashad Penny. If you were super in on Rashad Penny last uh, to start the season, I kind of get it. I was not. And he showed us that he was efficient 
but he didn't really do that much for fantasy purposes. And now Kenneth Walker is going to be back. It's going to be in a hyper-limited capacity, but in a, a matchup that's going to probably be as difficult, if not more difficult, in Week 2. I am just evo- avoiding Rashad Penny. I, I think we've we've seen the best of Rashad Penny, and it was to end the season last year. He's going to be in a committee timeshare more and more as the next couple weeks go on, and he's probably the worst option of the two running backs between him and Kenneth Walker. So ultimately... I hope you juiced the orange on Rashad Penny in Dynasty Leagues last year, but he's a guy I'm not I'm not really interested in in week two, and probably going further, it's going to get less and less exciting to look at what Rashad Penny can offer your team. All right, guys, if you have any questions, comments, drop them below. Hit me up on Twitter at Marco underscore 14P, and do not forget to subscribe to the Dynasty Nerds YouTube channel, and if you use the link in the description below, you can get 15% off on the Nerd Herd, the Dynasty GM, be a part of it all, and we've got some awesome stuff coming out this season. You do not want to miss a single bit of it. All right, thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to be kind, do good, and I'll see you next time. Peace.